bendable body uh, method is resistant stretching. And we're going to show you how to resistant stretch your shoulder and the back of your leg. So we're going to go over the four pillars of a stretch. Uh, but first of all, there's, uh, you're resisting. That's the key thing here, resisting. That changes the fascia. That produces results that improve your uh, strength, flexibility, and uh, alignment, which helps with pain and symptoms and things like that. So let's uh, start on the shoulder. This will be the target muscle area that we're stretching, right? Part of the outside of the arm, shoulder, up into the traps. So typically, people go right to the end range, and they call that stretching. Resistant stretching is start with the muscle in a shorter position, not an end range. You start shorter, shorter. And this arm is going to move back. This is the internal force, your own resistance. My right hand is going to grab my elbow. And it's going to pull my elbow against resistance, against resistance, against resistance. Let it go. So let's go over the four pillars of a stretch. There's a start position. That's, wherever you, that's, that's where you're comfortable starting. So some people will be comfortable here. Some people will be comfortable here. Some people go, okay? So let's start here. Start pillar number one, start. Uh, pillar number two, add the resistance. So the left elbow is going back. The helper hand's pulling against each other. There's the resistance, pillar two. Pillar three, keep pillar two and stretch and lengthen. And pillar four is let it go and go back to the start. Pillar one, the start position. Pillar two, the resistance. Pillar three, keep the resistance and stretch and lengthen. Pillar four, let it go. No, no resistance. And, and, and do it again. Do three sets of six, 10, 15 reps to start. That's one way to stretch. And um, you can only go as far in length as you can keep resisting. So that, that's too far. This stops shortening. That's another blog. But let's learn a stretch for the central hamstring. Back of the leg, we have three hamstrings. We're going to do the central hamstring. Again, uh, most people, uh, when, when they stretch their hamstring, they might put this leg out and just kind of bend down and kind of hang out at the end range, right? Well, left leg, take a little step forward, bend both knees, Pillar one, start position. Pillar two, where's the resistance in this stretch? The internal force is your hamstring. So how does that engage? Well, that front heel has got to pull back. And then you can feel your arm engage. So that's pillar two, the resistance. Pillar three, keep that, keep that, keep that. And fold forward and then let it go, pillar four. You got to keep a bend in the knee. You can't, can't do it straight. You got to bend the knee. Pull the heel back, pull the heel back, pull the heel back. Resist, resist, resist continuously throughout the range and let it go. Okay? Pull the heel back, pull the heel back. Resist, resist, resist actively and then let it go and come on back. Again, you want to do three sets just as a basic rule of thumb. Be careful of the range. It's about the resistance and you want to change the fascia to get stronger, faster, and less pain. I think a lot of people that haven't tried resistance stretching um, might ask, and we know they will because we've been doing this a long time. We get this question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you hold the stretch for? <laughs> uh, the, the fascia changes with resistance and continued resistance in a movement. Now, it doesn't have to be a big movement, but holding the stretch... Uh, and there's been a lot of studies done on all the basic uh, st stretching techniques. Uh, it actually weakens muscles and makes t creates micro tears. So when you resist, you engage the fascia, you protect the muscles, you protect the joints, and you don't overstretch and there's no pain involved. So you're not holding the stretch. It's a stretch movement. Not holding the stretch. You, uh, you resist. You've got to re actively resist. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, There's no and, holding. And so you just said your joints are protected, and you know we know that when as soon as you resist. There's a suspension that happens in the joint, and we don't want the stretch to go into the joint because a lot of people that might be watching this could have pain and injury in their joint or maybe even like a tear, which is something that we deal with all the time. And mm -hmm. so how do they know that they're safe, not only safe, that their injury is going to get better when they do this stretch? Well, it'll heal faster for sure, and, and there won't be any pain. Uh, depending on the degree of injury, the degree of a tear, degree... You want to stay away from that target muscle, that area, and you stretch the muscle on the other side. For instance, we were just stre stretching um, the shoulder, the outside of the arm here. We're lengthening the outside of the arm. So this, the inside of the arm is shortening. And so that's another component of flexibility is that while one body part's lengthening, lengthening, another part's shortening. And the ability of the muscle to shorten isn't very good. And so if, a muscle, if you're lengthening a muscle and this isn't shortening, this gets overstretched. So, and that's probably how the tear or something happened. That is how the tear happened initially. So wherever your tear is, then you stretch the other side of the body. Mm. That's how you start. That's, that's a safe way to go. And then also, like, if there's an actual injury in a joint, like directly in a joint, um, we would recommend that you stretch, you know, some of the large muscle groups associated with that joint, but you're not actually stretching in that joint. And as soon as you resist, the joint is, like, taken out of play. Is that correct? Like, say, for example, someone has a labral tear in the mm -hmm. hip. Mm -hmm. I, real simple. When you resist, you engage the fascia tissue, and it suspends the muscle tissue, even though the muscle's involved, they're not, they're not separate. And then it suspends and creates space in the joint so nothing goes in the joints. Right. Yeah, you're safe. You're safe when you resist. You've got to fully it resist. Pressure, and then it'll take pressure off the joints by getting those muscles to work better. Change the fascia a little bit, and then you get more space in that joint, and it's, it, it, it hurts less. And you just get how many reps and how much force do you need to change it. So resistance stretching is pretty much the exact opposite of strength training, right? The movement is, and yeah, it, well, it's strength training. You start the muscle long, you add an outside force, and you make it short against that force. Resistance stretching is you start short, you internally resist, and you have an outside force overcoming it, whether it's the floor, the wall, and somebody the else, and the sister, yeah. And so it balances weight training. It balances weight training, but what we found is if you're going to weight lift and you're going to do 20 reps of weight lifting, you've got to do 80 reps of resistance stretching. Mm -hmm. Or if you do not, you know, 10 reps of weight lifting, you've got to do 90. The ratio, because of the initial force, so if, typically if a person can lift 50 pounds or lift 50 pounds, you know, start here and push up. If they started here, they could probably put 300 pounds on the bar and resist it on the way down. They might, you know, but they can't push that up. But the resistive force is, you know, exponential, or two to one, five to one, ten to one, twenty to one, in terms of force. And so, and where do we want that to be if the tissue's healthy? Where do we want that ratio to be? You know, we don't really know. It's a, you know, two to one is a seems like a nice. The the less fascial force you have by changing the force with the resistance stretching they do with bend the body, the more strength the muscle is going to have. Yeah. So that's going to go up and that's going to lower the ratio, but, you know. Depends on the area of the body. Depends on the person, the movement they're making. But it's safe to say, generally speaking, in the population, that ratio is pretty off. I mean, there's way like off tissue in the body that could be 10 fascia force to one muscle force. Yeah. Like, say the hamstring. The weaker you are, the greater the difference in forces of the muscle strength and the fascial force. Right, right. Great. I guess the last point we want to bring up is, um, you know, resistant stretching doesn't just change fasci fascia and muscles and pain. It also impacts organ health. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the first one we did, that's going to change the health of your large intestine because the large intestine meridian runs right along there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have high blood pressure, low pressure, everything the large intestine is regulating, that gets better. Elimination. 
And how about that leg stretch you taught him? Central hamstring nerves, brain, brain. Um, meridian runs down the central hamstring, um, then it goes up the center of the back. So yeah. Brain health. So you can try those two stretches. We have a number of other stretches you can try in our various yeah. blogs, on our YouTube channel, and um, leave us a question. Yeah, we'd love your feedback. Thanks.